welcome to your number one place to be for those honest reviews and that is of course Kit Guru with Christina, your host today. Get ready to dive into the depths here with the Doom Chair by Noble Chairs. This is a special edition and is from their Hero range. This awesome looking chair comes in at $379.99 on the Noble Chairs website. Before we jump in, make sure you have rang that notification bell, hit that sub and that like button too, please. Now, the box this thing comes in is pretty big to begin with, and it's pretty heavy too. I would advise two people move it, ideally, if you can. As I was getting the stuff out of the box, it's all individually wrapped, and once everything is out, I looked at the manual, and it's nice and big, easy to read with clear pictures too, and it's made of a really nice laminated material. The manual suggests that it's best to have two people assemble this, but in Kit Guru fashion, it's just little old me here today making it to see if it's possible possible with one person because let's face it we don't always have someone to help us but do follow the instructions and try and get someone to help you if you can. As I was taking the bits out of the box I noticed that the seat and the back of the chair were actually quite heavy individually and also on the base of the seat there was only one arm attached. The back and the seat of the chair is undoubtedly where the majority of the 30 kilograms of weight is. Next I attached the other arm onto the base and I found this really easy and could finger tighten the bolts to start with and then of course I finished them off with the tool. The tools that come with the chair are of good quality and up for the job. The next step was to attach the underneath mechanics to the base of the chair. This again was a pretty heavy-ish piece here, but I didn't have trouble lining it up and fixing it to the chair. Next is the paddles for the levers. I couldn't push hard enough to get the plastic covers over the metal internal bar, so I did actually have to ask for help to get this done. The wheels were pretty difficult to get in, I ended up putting my hand into the nook of the wheel to get enough force behind me to push it in and it kind of pinches your hand a little. but that's nothing I've not really seen in other chairs. Other than that, there wasn't much of a bother. The bolts were all well threaded and fit all the holes and everything lined up nicely. You can also put the armrests closer or further away to your body by adjusting where you screw them into the plate. Putting the piston into the wheelbase and the chair onto the piston itself. Now, it is quite a big chair and at 137 centimeters tall and a depth of 56.5 centimeters. So yeah, it's pretty difficult by yourself. It was also pretty cumbersome, but I did manage to get that chair together and onto the piston mostly by myself However, I did get a bit of vocal help as to finding where to put the piston Overall the weight and size of the chair made it hard for me to put together as you may have gathered I would agree with the manual and say two people would be much better than one Next I put the backrest onto the bracket and this was pretty easy to be honest And again, I can't stress how good the bolts and holes are here It was so easy to get them in and finally when I put the covers over the screws that was again icing on the cake super easy it took me about 40 minutes to put this beast together and I would say that's kind of my average so that gets a thumbs up from me Usability wise there are three buttons or levers on the armrest. The front button when depressed allows you to move the armrest forward and backwards. The one on the inside underneath allows you to move the armrest left and right. So closer or further away. This button does kind of go inside the mechanism a little bit at the furthest point away. So just watch your thumb isn't hanging off at the end of the button too much or you can kind of hit it on the edge and it's a little bit painful. Then you have the outside lever. This allows you to extend and lower the arm armrest. The armrest depth is 27 centimeters and the height is 10.5 centimeters. The armrests are really hard rubber, there isn't much cushioning here, which again is kind of the norm for gaming chairs I find. If you're listening out there chair designers, I would love to have some nice squishy arm cushions to rest my arms on, even if they're removable I don't mind. <laughs> That's just my preference though. The rubber is also textured for extra grip and easy to clean. The armrest supports are plastic outside with a metal inside that houses the mechanism and connects to the chair with a metal plate underneath the base. Since we are on the way down in the chair here, I will talk about the piston. We have a 48 to 56 centimeter height and you can tell by how high and low this goes that this would be great for people short or tall because I'm about 5'5 five five to 5'7 five roughly and I found it to be the right height for me with my feet flat on the floor. 
on the lowest setting whereas my hubby has it almost halfway and that's about right for him to have his feet flat on the floor and he's around 5'11". I find it strange that the paddle is facing the front because on my chair it faces the other way around but once you get used to reaching for it in front of the chair it's fine just took me a while to kind of get used to that. Talking of paddles there are two one on each side the left is to lock and unlock the tilt facility and on the right there is one to go up and down. You also have a lever on the left side that allows the back rest to tilt which has a 90 degree to 125 degree movement and you can lean quite far back but you can't lie down but honestly I never lay down on my desk chair anyway so that's fine by me let's know down in the comments if you actually do that like lay flat on your chair have a nap maybe I don't know let us know <laughs> under the seat is the tilt mechanism so you can tilt back or forward and you adjust how easy it is to tilt by using the large adjustment knob before we move on I would like to mention the wheels they're really smooth on our floor there is no catching or dragging and they work well in all directions without getting caught up I don't need to push very hard or pull very hard to get them to move which is nice because my chair the MSI mag CH110 is a little harder to get going we have an uneven floor as well with a relatively short pile carpet but I think these wheels would work pretty well on all surfaces to be honest let's go all the way back up to the top of the chair and talk about some of the other functions up there so you have that built-in lumbar support which is adjustable by using the knob on the right side of the chair this knob is not reachable with your right arm though and you kind of have to turn completely around to adjust it this isn't a huge problem but it is a little inconvenient as you kind of just want to be able to turn around and adjust it you know a bit here a bit there as you go rather than turning completely around the inbuilt lumbar support is obviously quite a good unique selling point and it is something that people will really enjoy especially if you don't like pillows like my husband he hates them so he loves this inbuilt support because it means you can adjust it to how far out you want to sit without being forced into a certain position comfort wise the padding in the chair is very firm on the seat and the backrest however after doing my research into our comments section it appears that some of you already have a hero and after a month or so the phone molds to you and wears in one of you even said it's like a pair of leather shoes it takes a while to wear in but it's worth it in the end for me though I'm a soft chair lover but as I mentioned my hubby loves it and finds it super comfy and so do you guys some of you guys down in the comments it is a preference thing there is also another reason for the firmness of this chair and this is down to the material this chair has cold foam and the material is intended to make sure that you keep correct posture as the softer chairs allow you to kind of fall out of position and sink into them a little bit the back feels very flat but luckily obviously with that built-in lumbar support it does mean that you can make a significant difference and it gives the back rest that much needed support there are also no cushions included with the special edition as of yet but you can buy the normal noble chairs pillows separately but I would have liked to have seen at least some pillows thrown in with this chair just me personally also this chair has received several certifications that make it legal to use in the workplace and this means that it goes through rigorous testing to make sure that it can be used for like nine hours consistently and bits like that so this design has been made with the feedback from esports and professionals and the gaming community the hero is also the largest gaming chair made by noble chairs the backrest has been both expanded and been made longer but also ensures it remains in proportion the seat itself surface and armrests are also longer. There is a seat measurement of 55 centimeters here and a width of 52 centimeters. I know I shouldn't but I love sitting cross-legged on my chairs a lot of the time and this has ample room for you to do so. The upholstery is PU leather and inside it has cold foam padding as mentioned earlier and this is covering the steel frame so it feels nice and sturdy on the inside too. This chair also supports a weight of up to 150 kilograms and as you can see this chair is made for someone quite larger in stature than me. I kind of feel a little bit lost in it. If you are like myself I would strongly recommend checking out the Epic and Icon ranges as they are much more suited to my kind of height and frame. I've kind of left the looks to last on this because let's be honest they are absolutely fantastic. This is a special edition Doom chair and the embossed stitching on the back of the chair is absolutely stunning. So very well done. There isn't a stitch out of place, no catching, no nothing, as well as that Doom logo in black on the headrest area. 
The Doom design also runs all down the side of the chair too and there is a tasty slogan on the back of the seat that says rip and tear which is something you would only kind of expect on a Doom chair let's face it. The stitching really is fantastic though and I can't stress it enough all over the chair even the normal stuff that runs all the way down the seams is very well made and the craftsmanship cannot be denied here. Nothing feels cheap or wobbly either so that kind of runs through the whole chair. My conclusion is this that this chair looks amazing but it just isn't for me personally due to my frame however if you are looking for a chair with a little more room great longevity looks the bees knees and has the build quality to match this is for you this chair is one of the coolest looking designs on a chair to date that i have seen in a while with all of that detail and stitching the price is not cheap okay but you get a lot of quality for the money here and it just would have been nice to see this some pillows included so there you have it what do you think of this chair have you got one let us know down in the comments and of course hit that sub bell and like button check out our merch and have a look at our website daily for tech news this is kit guru i'm christina and i will see you next time